Chapter 4 That next week went by awfully slow. I went out to look at the egg every half hour, I guess. After what Dr. Zymer had said about the egg maybe hatching, I was getting pretty anxious to see what was going to happen. But every time I looked in the nest, the egg was just lying there, just as it had for a month and a half. The hen was beginning to look kind of bored, too, as if she didn't really care anymore whether the old thing hatched or not. That was a bad sign, because this was no time to quit, just when the end was in sight. If the hen had walked off the job now, I think I would have sat on the egg myself. Well, Saturday came around at last, but no news from the egg. I'd been out to see it so many times that morning that Mom had said, A watched pot never boils, Nate. I never could figure out how grown-ups could be so patient about things all the time. We were having dinner, and I could hardly sit still. Pop had been looking at me for a while. You know, Nate, he said, you don't want to get your heart set on this thing too much. If you get too eager about it, you're going to be awfully hard hit if that old thing doesn't hatch. I kind of suspect we're running on borrowed time anyway. I never heard of an egg that took more than five weeks. But Dr. Zymer said it might hatch within a week. And who is Dr. Zymer? Mom wanted to know. Just because he's a doctor, that doesn't mean he knows everything. Why, a city doctor like him probably doesn't know the first thing about poultry. That's right, Nate, Pop said. He's probably a big eye, ear, nose, and throat man from New York or Philadelphia. Chances are he's a specialist on the inner ear or something like that and hasn't been called to look at a sick egg since he was in medical school. Cynthia giggled. I can just see him asking the egg to stick out its tongue and say, Aw, I didn't see anything very funny. After all, if you've taken care of something for all that time, you don't feel too much like joking about it. But Dr. Zymer talked as if he knew a lot about it, I said. He said he collected eggs or something like that. So do we, Pop said. We collect them twice a day. Besides, Mom said, this one is something new. I don't imagine he's seen anything like this before. How could he know what it's likely to do? Pop grinned. Don't know what you call a six-week egg exactly new, except compared with a dinosaur egg, perhaps. Maybe Mr. Dr. Zymer collects dinosaur eggs. Now, Walt, don't be ridiculous, Mom said. Just stop talking, everybody, and finish up. I've got a berry pie for dessert. They're the blueberries that Cynthia picked Thursday up in Thompson's Meadow. She went over to the stove and brought the pie out of the oven. She put the bread board down on the table and set the pie down on it. A little shiny trinkle of blueberry juice had leaked out through a hole in the crust, and you could just see that good warm smell coming out. Dinosaur eggs, indeed, Mom said. We didn't say much until after the pie was all gone. After dinner, I went out to look at the egg again, but nothing doing. Nothing doing at supper time either, or at bedtime. In the evening, Pop talked a lot about going camping in Fraconia Notch. I guess he was trying to get my mind off the egg, and to tell the truth, I was kind of getting ready to ease myself over a pretty stiff disappointment that I felt was coming. When I went upstairs to bed, I tried to persuade myself that it wouldn't have been so much even if the egg had hatched out. Perhaps just triplet chicks or something, and then probably wouldn't have lived anyway. In the morning, I crawled out of bed feeling pretty gloomy about things. I was trying to fasten my mind on the camping trip so I wouldn't think about the egg anymore. I went down to the cellar and got old Ezekiel out of his box. As usual, he flapped his wings and clawed around a lot, and I stumbled up the cellar stairs with his wing feathers in my face. I tripped over a bucket and a mop that somebody had left at the top of the stairs, and Ezekiel got loose and made a couple of trips around the kitchen before I could herd him out the door. By the time I got him out to the chicken yard, I was about ready to give up everything that anything to, that had anything to do with chickens or eggs or anything like that. That was probably why I didn't notice anything different at first. I just went over to the nest and put a little grain down for that poor old hen and started to turn away when I realized all at once that something had changed. 
the hen wasn't sitting on the nest anymore. She was walking back and forth with a kind of wild look in her eye, and every time she came near the nest, she gave a little hop and fluttered away. I bent down to look in the nest, and, wow, there was something in there, and it was alive. It was moving around. I thought at first that it was a rat or something that had busted the egg and eaten it. But after I got a good look at but after I got a good look, I could see that it wasn't any rat. It was about the size of a squirrel, but it didn't have any hair and its head. Well, I couldn't believe my eyes when I saw it. It didn't look like anything I'd ever seen before. It had three little knobs sticking out of its head and a sort of collar up over its neck. It was a lizardy looking critter and it kept moving its thick tail slowly back and forth in the nest. The poor hen was looking pretty upset. I guess she hadn't expected anything like this and neither had I. I just stood there for a minute. I was so surprised all I could do was look. Then I started yelling and lit out across the yard as fast as I could go. When I busted into the kitchen, Mom was so startled that she dropped a saucepan in the sink. Pop come running down the stairs with lather over one side of his face and a razor in his hand, and Cynthia was right behind. For goodness sakes, Mom said, what's the matter with you? It's alive, I shouted. It's alive, and it moves around, and it wiggles its tail, and has horns, and it looks like a lizard, and it doesn't have any fur, and the hen's running around and around and doesn't know what to do about it, and... Hold on there, Nate, Pop said. You look as if you'd seen a ghost. What's all the excitement about? I was so out of breath that I couldn't talk for a while. It's the egg, I said. It's hatched. What? Pop shouted. It did? Why didn't you say so? And he ran out the door and down the steps, still holding on to his razor. I grabbed Mom's hand and pulled her along, and Cynthia was just ahead of us. She'd forgotten to put on her shoes, and Mom was saying, All this excitement over an egg? My goodness! When we all got out to the nest, Pop was leaning over, looking hard at it. Mom was still saying, Why? We should all come running out here only half dressed just to see an egg that hatched out. I can't see anything in there. It's too dark. Walt, why don't you bring it out here where we can look at it, whatever it is? Pop was still leaning over, staring at that thing in the nest. All he said was, by jing, under his breath, sort of. By the time Cynthia had squeezed in beside Pop, she took one good look and then let out a screech that you could have heard way down to the post office. That started the hen off, and she began squawking and flapping around in circles, and Ezekiel started crowing, and the goat started bleeding. There was an awful lot of commotion, and everybody was talking at the same time, and nobody could hear anything. When it quieted down a little, Pop said, Nate, you better run into the house and call Dr. Zimer. He wanted to be told first thing. Remember, he's at the McPherson's place. When I got a hold of the operator on the telephone, I asked her to ring the McPherson's, but she said it was only half past six, and that was pretty early to call those summer people. Are you sure you can't wait till later? Mrs. Beebe wanted to know. She's the operator, and she knows just about everybody in town by their voices. Well, it's sort of an emergency, I told her. It's for Dr. Zimer. He's staying at the McPherson's, and he told me to call him the minute the egg hatched, and... Oh, did your egg hatch, Nate? said Mrs. Beebe. Well, now, isn't that nice? What was in it? Oh, gosh, Mrs. Beebe, it was pretty strange. But you'd better ring the McPherson's because Dr. Zimer wanted me to call him right away, just as soon as the egg hatched. All right, Nate, I'll ring their number. But those folks come from Washington, and they don't hardly ever get up this early down there. I could hear her ring the number, and it rang and rang for quite a while before anybody answered. Finally, somebody picked up the receiver and said, Hello, in kind of a husky voice. Can I speak to Dr. Zimer? I said. Dr. Zimer, he's sleeping. Who is this anyway? The voice said. 
This is Nate Twitchell. Dr. Zymer said to call him right away when the egg hatched, no matter what time it was. When the egg hatched? Say, what are you talking about? Well, I explained, we have this egg up here, and Dr. Zymer wanted to see what was in it when it hatched, and it has. He acted like it was pretty important. He said he collected eggs. Oh, the voice said. He said that? Collected eggs, eh? That's a good one. Well, okay, I'll tell him, but it's awfully early. Just hold on a minute, will you? There was a long silence on the other end of the line, and then I heard the receiver picked up again. Hello there, Nate. That you? Y yes, Dr. Zymer. The egg finally hatched out. It did? Is it alive? Sure is, I said. What's it look like, Nate? Can you describe it? Well, it's a queer-looking thing. Looks like a big lizard, except that it's got little horns on the... There was a kind of a whoop on the other end of the phone, and Dr. Zymer yelled, I'll be right over! And then there was a crashing sound, as if he'd forgotten to let go of the receiver.